call the Honourable Member Shane Ardern. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a privilege and a, a pleasure to speak in the Food Bill today. Mr Speaker, this bill, as the Minister outlined and others have spoken about, replaces or amends a number of acts. The Food Act 1981, uh, the Food Hygiene Regulations 1974, the Animal Products Act 1999 or, and the Wine Act 2003. So it is a very significant piece of work. As others have said, it had a very, very long gestation period. But the issue here at stake, Mr Speaker, and the reason why as much attention has been paid to it over such a long time, is reputational. New Zealand is an export nation of food. Uh, in fact, we're unique in the world in terms of the dependence on uh, protein food exports uh, in terms of the size of that export return on our economy. I don't know of another nation. I, we are unique, to the best of my knowledge, in the world in that regard. So uh, reputation is absolutely essential and absolute solid legislative protection around the quality and guarantee of that quality uh, is absolutely essential to that reputation. So the Primary Production Select Committee was uh, faced with a, an enormous task of trying to balance, on one hand, uh, major export companies that export food, and then on the other hand, small fundraising, school calf days, uh, lions, rotary club uh, fundraisers with sausage sizzles in front of the warehouse, farmers markets and other such. Uh, even Marae, Mr Speaker, uh, derive a fair amount of their income nowadays from uh, the sale or the preparation of food. So a wide sector of society concerned about um, what needed to be put in place in regard to having uh, some certainty that food was safe, but on the other hand not being over bureaucratic and requiring the high level of food handling certificate that uh, is necessary obviously for a commercial uh, restaurant or other food uh, outlet. So the committee was charged with the task of how do you come up with something that covers that whole area of, uh, of concern and I think on balance we've arrived at a place that is far better than where we started uh, in regard to that. So small outlets now will be able to, small organisations, fundraising, voluntary groups, church groups, Mariah etc will be able to sell food with a far lower level of compliance, a far lower cost uh, than what they had in the past. And at the other end of the spectrum, uh, particularly in the light of the WPC case, uh, the regulatory framework and the power that the uh, Director General has in regard to recall has been enhanced. So a substantial, uh, I guess, uh, piece of movement in regard to where we were prior to that. Uh, the um, clearance of imported food has been something of a debating point in New Zealand in recent times in the media, particularly with the growth in our uh, exports to the sort of Asian areas and in particular China. Um, and so being able to create a regime where foreign nations have total faith that our systems are robust, our traceability is second to none and uh, that traceability uh, stems right back to the farm uh, gate of the origin of the food, uh, has set us aside, Mr Speaker, as world leaders. And so this piece of legislation, this bill when it's enacted, will enhance that. I have no doubt of that. Um, it will be and is being looked at as other uh, international jurisdictions look to enhance their own food bill or their own food safety uh, legislation as something that will be seen as a leading uh, area for people to go and look at. The committee was provided with a supplementary order paper that the Minister spoke of, uh, order paper 278. This uh, order paper itself was bigger in size, in fact I think it was over 400 pages, um, than what the original bill itself was. Um, so. Uh, you, you'd have to sort of wonder at how the original drafting um, could lead to such an outcome. Well, as uh, the previous speaker said, the original drafting, of course, started under the previous government, so that may shed some light on the, uh, uh, on the explanation to that, but equally, it has been a fast-moving vehicle, if you might say, in terms of 
where our trading is, has moved to, from, from and to, uh, the kind of uh, uh, extra testing that's now required, the more sophisticated testing systems that we have that are able to pick up uh, different contaminants that we weren't able to pick up with pick up 100 years ago or 50 years ago or even 10 years ago. So uh, this is an area where, of course, technology uh, absolutely comes to the fore. Uh, science is a leading area. Um, the number of ingredients that now can go into some of the more uh, finely processed uh, nutraceuticals and pharmaceuticals and foodstuffs is such that no one would have dreamed of it so many years ago. So uh, to be able to keep pace with that is always going to be a challenge for this parliament. And I think uh, to a large extent, Mr Speaker, this food bill has achieved that. I also want to place on record our thanks for the uh, forbearance, I guess, of the officials, who certainly were worked hard through this process. Uh, every time they come back, we had another series of questions for them. Um, so I want to acknowledge the work that they did. Uh, and also, I want to acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues on the Select Committee. There was very good cross-party support to make progress on this. Um, the Honourable Damien O'Connor mentioned the, um, I guess, bipartisan, you might say multi-partisan approach that was taken to this. Um, I'll be interested in hearing uh, the contribution from the Greens in a few moments. Um, but the, overall, there was support from the Greens on most aspects of the bill. There were some concerns raised. I'm sure we'll hear about them in a moment. Um, overall, the committee worked very well together. And of course, uh, there was a member from the New Zealand First Party there, Richard Prosser, who was there by leave of the committee uh, as well and made a sound contribution during the process also. So I acknowledge them and thank them. My own colleagues, of course, Ian McKelvey and Colin King, um, both substantial contributors to the process. And the Deputy Speaker, our select committee has the uh, unprecedented uh, um, situation in the Parliament in the time I've been here of having a Deputy Speaker as a member of the um, select committee. And, of course, uh, someone who's served in the Parliament for a long time um, and brings a lot of parliamentary experience to it. So, Mr Speaker, I think the bill will enhance New Zealand food safety and I look forward to its passage through the House. I call the Honourable Annette King.